everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today to have a new hall star with us. We they have the star of the ghosts of Christmas always here. And we have Kim Matula. And uh, thank you so much, Kim, for coming on the podcast. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And yeah. I love the term hall stars. Yes, I that's don't, right. I hadn't heard that. That's <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, we invented it. We get credit <laughs> way back yeah, in 2017. Uh, trade, trademark. That's brilliant. I love it. Hall stars. Well, we're so excited to have you as part of the Hallmark family and uh, your new movie. But first, we'd like to get to know you a little bit. So why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Tell us a little bit how you got inspired to get into acting. Uh, well, hey, everyone. I'm Kim Matula. Uh, oh, my gosh. I've been acting over half my life. Uh, at this point, and I just, how did I get into acting? I think I have to credit one of my childhood friends uh, who had a video camera growing up when we didn't have one. And she was like, hey, do you wanna make a movie? And I said, I don't know what you mean. And she was like, yeah, let's just like, let's go be like Civil War kids whose parents are off to war and we'll just like go play in the playhouse and like pretend like we're, it was like playing house, but on camera. And something clicked for me then. And I was like, I love this. And I want to be doing this all the time. And so that is what we did all the time. So you were That's... going like hardcore uh, period pieces. and so I know. Like... I know. <laughs> what were we doing? We, we had a whole scene where we were going to jump off the roof. And it was like a little shed, like a playhouse shed. Okay. And, like, and when we... That. I know, right? Wow, going big. <laughs> and when we jumped off the roof, we jumped onto a trampoline, like uh -huh. off camera onto a trampoline. You know, we were very safe yeah. about it. But we, um, you know, we would cut back to us and pretend that we were like bleeding. And I remember <laughs> we used, we were very dramatic <laughs> children. We used um, toothpaste. They, we used red, like cinnamon toothpaste as blood. Uh, and I yeah. put it like coming out of my nose. <laughs> and then... Like two minutes into the shot, I had to leave because my nose was burning so bad because I just put cinnamon toothpaste up my nose. Yeah. Uh, lesson learned that day. Well, lesson I learned. think that we have a hidden hidden gem in there somewhere with your uh, <laughs> Civil War action uh, movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. really is. Three yeah. kids just trying to make it work while their parents yeah. were off at war. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. That's really charming. So yeah. it, it looked on your IMDb, you've done a bit of uh, voice work. Uh, oh my gosh. Anime? You know, it's been, a, it's been a minute. Yeah. But I did when I was uh, living in Texas. So when I was uh, 17, 18, 19, you know, years old, I did, I did some voice work for Funimation Studios doing anime voiceover. And it was so much fun. It's funny you bring it up. I was recently just scrolling going through the Funimation uh, website to go and find my episodes because it's been so long since I've heard any of it. Uh -huh. um, but I had a great time. I played all sorts of different people. Yeah, it was kind of something I didn't know that I liked to do until big, I got into it. I'm a big animation person. So oh, I always yeah? get excited when I see in the IMDb's of, of the nice. actors. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's fun. And yeah. it's, inter it's really interesting to see you know, the Japanese version of the show and then to have the uh -huh. writers here have to translate everything into English, but still making sure that it kind of matches the mouth in the right way. And um, it's kind of like a science, making sure that you're you're saying the line at the right beats so that it matches the mouth. Um, yeah. It's, fun. it's really fun. Yeah, that's cool. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. 
As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So then you were on The Bold and Beautiful for a long time. For five and, years. Yeah, yeah, five years. Yeah, uh, five years. And what is that like, the grind of the soap uh, soap opera world? I mean, you produce so many episodes so, so fast. So many episodes. Oh, my God. <laughs> so many episodes. Yeah, I mean, it shoots year round. Um, yeah. Our, you know, everyone's schedule is a little different, but on Bold, the schedule was like work three weeks, have a week off, work three weeks, have a week off, um, which was really nice. And it, it does make you feel like you're constantly working, but you do always have a little, a little bit of a break, which is really nice. And then you get, you know, a month off in the summer and, you know, holidays, you get a week and a half or something, but it's, you know, I was in an A storyline, which means I was in almost every episode uh, and it's, I, I had, I had no idea what I was jumping into, you know, when I, when I joined the show, I had never done anything like that. I was 21. I was 21. I looked 17 and yeah, I, I jumped into this role and we were shooting every day, but it was such a wonderful learning experience as an actor, you know, of course you learn about like where the camera is and if you're going to make a dramatic face you want to do it downstage towards your camera instead of upstage but they can't see it i definitely learned how to cry all the time because my character was very emotional and it was great and i made some of my best friends who i'm still very very close with to this day yeah did so, you have yeah. any did you have any outlandish uh storylines did I? What was your oh most outlandish storyline? Jeez. Um, well, so my character, I think by the time I left the show, she was probably only like 22, 23, but I had worn six wedding dresses oh my on that show. Like, and, and I had only been successfully married the one time. You know, they all just kept getting, it, it, there was interference with every wedding. Uh-huh. Um, oh. Did you have yeah. any like evil twins or, or, uh, or aliens or, you know, just something over the top like that? I didn't Clones. have evil twins or aliens. You know, we, Bold and the Beautiful really kept it as grounded as, as possible. I mean, there were times where I was like, I was stuck in a gondola watching the love of my life marry somebody else and I'm like screaming from the in Aspen I'm like screaming from the gondola like Liam no don't marry her I'm right here um I you know I got to fight have like a chocolate fountain fight with another girl which didn't last very long honestly because I slipped on the chocolate and went down pretty early on your character name her name was Hope Logan Hope Logan. That's Hope. very, Isn't that, very it's, classic. It's a good, right? It's a good soapy you're, name. And your dude was Liam. So it was Hope and Liam. Was Hope that and the, Liam. Yeah. Hope and Liam were the Starcraft lovers. And, you know, there, it's always a love triangle. So I was either with Liam or Wyatt. Oh, okay. Um, who, who were half brothers. Oh, course. okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, my character was pushed down the stairs when she was pregnant. She lost the baby. <laughs> oh, no. It's a real, I know it was really devastating. Uh, yeah. You know, just like all kinds of situations on that show. I yeah. love the melodrama of it. Oh, so fun. Yeah. It's aggressive. Uh-huh. For sure. You're with like the, the, just the love triangles. You're with somebody <laughs> new every week. And it's, it's almost like the goal is like, the goal is to get married. And if you're not married, then the then it kind of means you can <laughs> go around with whoever you want. Like you're right. not married. Yeah, Very but weird. then like something will happen and you get separated and and then of course you, usually it's you another get, girl or another yeah guy. or get tempted. Mm-hmm. It's very fun. Mm-hmm. Very fun. It is. It's it's can't be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but I didn't get to do any comedy, which is why mm-hmm. I left because I wanted to. Do right. Yeah. yeah. And you did unreal right after that. Mm-hmm. I did. Uh, so yeah. You were on a season, a lot of hall stars on unreal. Were like there? Brennan, Brennan Elliott. Oh yeah. Him, Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He's the, the host um, yeah. on unreal. Yeah. God, that was really fun. We shot that in Vancouver for like four months. Um, 
And that oh. was, it was such a great experience. You know, my, my character lasted to the final two girls. Oh. I know. Um, and it got, every day was just like perfect hair and makeup and gowns. Um, but man, was it freezing cold. Like we were, we were in bikinis in freezing weather and then it starts to rain and you're like, oh my God, I hate it here. Um, and, you know, they would like throw the cozy coats on us in between the takes and then throw them, you know, off and we're having to pretend like everything's fine. Mm -hmm. We love being in this like mini dress or this bikini while you can see our breath. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be hard. But it was really fun. It was yeah. a great experience. I loved it. Again, cool. still in touch with some of those people that I met on that show. Okay. Oh, so so what's it like being in a movie like Fighting with My Family, like a studio film like that? You know, it's such a it's just such a bigger um, beast was the word that came to my mind. I think because of the alliterations, uh, it's longer hours. And it feels like maybe there's a little more pressure to get things right because you want it to be really good. But, you know, I, I did have a smaller part in that movie. And so I was able to really have a good time and have fun. And honestly, watching Florence Pugh work on that movie set was one of the best, best things that I have gotten to do as an actor. I was watching her going, this girl is going to be winning Oscars like before we know it. And sure enough, I mean, yeah. Little Women, she did Little Women and is, was nominated and she's just such a force. Oh my gosh. Oh, to quote yeah. Olivia Wilde, that's what she said about her. Um, <laughs> she's, yeah. God. Uh, yeah, she's such a wonderful talent. I love getting to work with her. That's so cool. Okay. So tell us about Ghosts of Christmas Always. This sounds very creative uh, take on the Christmas Carol story. I know. I know, right? It is. I got to play the Ghosts of Christmas Present, not a part that I ever thought would be in my repertoire. Um, <laughs> but I had so much fun. I I read the script for it and I was so pleasantly surprised to see that there was some comedy in it. Just like very lighthearted getting to be silly. And that is always important to me when I read a script because I think that that's really what life is. Like it's it's got highs and lows all the time and even when something you know, powerfully heartfelt is happening. Someone trips over a rug and you get to laugh through, through, you know, any, any kind of serious moment. And I think that this movie, this script really brought that into it. Um, and so I, I was very drawn to that. And then, and then I, I also read the script and was crying, you know, towards the end. And I, I just felt, yeah, I, it was making me feel all the feelings happy and and sad and I I really liked that and I really was was interested in getting to play all of those things so um, so there's like a whole bunch of ghosts of Christmas present right and you are one of them correct you're trying to help like one of the other ghosts is that right uh no okay so it's so we so I work at the department re, department of restoring Christmas spirit Okay. And basically, so basically it's like, once you die in real life, um, some are chosen to go work at the department of restoring Christmas spirit and you're assigned past, present or future. And everyone is, you know, assigned, assigned into like teams. And, um, my team members for past and, and future were, uh, Reginald and Lori who were just so much fun to work with because they're such pros and they've been doing this, you know, for so long and they've got great stories. And I, you know, I watched Reginald on, on family matters and it's so that like blew my mind getting to die hard. I know, I know everybody loves die hard. And I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it once. Uh, I think now that I've worked with him and gotten to know him, I should go back and watch it again. Just Definitely. for fun. Definitely. Um, so, so yeah, so we, our job as, as a team, past, present, future, we get assigned a person and that person needs their Christmas spirit restored. Just, you know, just like in, in a Christmas carol, that's our job. And so we go to earth, you know, one night a year and we restore their Christmas spirit, except this year, our Mark doesn't seem to need 
restoration. He seems very cheerful. Like there's there's something wrong with this mission from from the beginning, and we just don't know what it is. But we're going to do our job. We're going to get to know this person, and we're going to take him on the journey of his life. And in that journey, I learn a lot about myself mm. and a lot about why he is our he is our um, our mission this year. And there is so much more to it than just restoring Christmas spirit. So much well, more. <laughs> so he's not really a Scrooge, though. He is not a Scrooge. He is not a Scrooge. Uh, his father's a real Scrooge, uh, and so there's some there's some confusion there. Like, hmm, maybe maybe it's supposed to be. Maybe we got it wrong. Maybe something got twisted in the communication pipeline at work, <laughs> and uh, you know we're really not sure what it is, but. You know, as obviously as the movie goes on, um, we learn what the connection is and why he was chosen. Uh, and and my character, Catherine, um, uh, really learns a lot about herself and in, in, in all kinds of ways that she was not expecting. And I think that's one of the great things about it for me about this script is that, you know, you just have to kind of let life happen sometimes and it will, and you know, you'll be exposed. Your eyes will be opened to, to things you were not expecting, but that you really needed. Mm -hmm. And I think she goes through that. Yeah. Well, that sounds very creative. Very fun. It is. It is creative. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I get to kind of jump through different period looks because my character is from the 1950s but then oh. she kind of yeah so I get to I got to have this really beautiful like 1950s look for a lot of it and kind of jump back and forth between like a present day look and a 1950s look and it was really it was really fun getting to explore that yeah that would be fun yeah. uh, so how did you get involved in the movie did you audition or did they come to you they came to me and I, I was really flattered. They came to me, you know, my, my manager called me and told me about it. She said, take a look at the script. And, uh, I, I loved the script immediately. It was kind of a, a no brainer. My, mm -hmm. my instinct, my gut was telling me that I should do it. And I'm so glad that I did because I had so much fun doing it. Yeah. So yeah. are, are you a big rom-com slash Christmas movie watching fan? I do love a rom-com. Yeah. I do love a rom-com and I do love Christmas movies. Um, I'm new to, I'm new to the, uh, you know, countdown to Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I had so much fun working on this one that it, it's made me want to experience more of them. Yeah. 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 Well, luckily there's like 40 of them. So, I, know. Year, so. <laughs> I got plenty to choose from. Yeah. And I'm, I've got so many friends, you know, in, in real life who've been a part of these films uh, and they've all had wonderful experiences. No one's got a, got a bad thing to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if you were assigned to boost someone's Christmas spirit, what mm. do you, what would you do in real life? Oh man. Well, <laughs> so I, so in real life, I'm a big Christmas uh, decorator. I love like de decorating my house for Christmas and I get it from my parents. My mom always went all out on the inside. My dad always went all out on the outside. And, you know, one of our favorite Christmas, my favorite Christmas memories is driving around looking at Christmas lights. And I do, I really embody that now as an adult um, every year. I, I decorate my house to the nines because one of my favorite things is like watching cars drive by my house yeah. and stop and, you know, take pictures or like something you know, like, you know, when it's winter time, you have the windows open and the air feels so crisp and so good and hearing people say how much they like the house and how cheerful and how it just really emulates the holidays. And I think that like that in a way I am giving people Christmas spirit in that way in real life. And I love being a part of that. Yeah. Um, well, it really, was especially, really it was especially meaningful in, during the pandemic, during the quarantine, yeah. because you couldn't go in people's houses, you couldn't entertain, but you could drive mm -hmm. around and see their decorations. Yeah. Or even like go for walks. I love yeah. going on walks around the neighborhood and 
just stopping at the houses that, you know, were someone, you can tell that people really took the care and the time to, to decorate. And I don't know, something about it just is so inviting and warm and cozy. And it brings back a nostalgia feeling for me that I really, really connect with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Mm-hmm. Well, we have some fun, silly questions to like to end with. We yeah, have, bring it on. All right. This is, this is the holiday version, of course. But our first question is, what is your favorite holiday drink? Ooh. I'm going to say eggnog. And it's not that you can drink like a whole huge glass of it. That's a lot of thick dairy to drink. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but if you cut it with like maybe a little spice rum or something like that and just like put it in a put it in like a really Christmassy teacup and just sip it. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's the holidays for yeah. me. Mm-hmm. All right. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Cut out cookies. Because my mom and my sister and I, I mean, from the time that we were itty bitty, make Christmas cut out cookies like sugar cookies. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, sugar cookies and we decorate them. And I've always been, um, more of the black sheep of the family. So I've always made a Christmas witch because, (laughs) because I just like it. So there's always a Christmas witch. That is my (laughs) contribution always. Um, you know, and now that my sister has kids, you know, we decorate them with icing and, um, yeah. So cut out sugar cookies are my favorite. I was going to say that could be the next Hallmark movie, but we've already technically had that. Cause there was a good, witch, uh, good, there was a good witch Christmas movie. So really, oh my God, okay. yeah. watch that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was the good witch's gift. I think it's what it was called. Good witch's gift. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm going to have to check that one out. <laughs> Definitely. That's got me written all over it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite Christmas song or Carol? Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Uh, mine too. Some, I love something, that one. right? It's really beautiful and classic, and I love um, the Judy Garland version of that song. And but but more importantly, I love the um, the the Muppets. John Denver and the Muppets have oh, a okay. really good Christmas album that I love. Yeah, and I think it's I don't remember is which it, Muppet is singing. Is, well, I know there's a very famous version with Bert and Ernie singing Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I'm not sure if it's that one, but it's not that one. Yeah. Uh this one's this one's definitely more of a growly Muppet voice, okay. but it's <laughs> it's one of my absolute yeah. favorites. It's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, I love that yeah. song too. Yeah. All right. What's your favorite classic Christmas movie? It's a wonderful life. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And it's, and it goes back to, to the nostalgia feeling that I, that I it still resonates with me because that's one we watched as a family every year. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you kind of forget how heavy it is oh. until you watch it and you're like, oh. he almost, it's just like suicide, he was, poverty, like it's really heavy. Greed and it yeah. really is. It's kind of dark and it is kind of one of those that you're like, really a Christmas movie or does it just take place at Christmas time yeah and you know who cares it's oh it's it's so good it's it's so good it's so and as an actor it's so moving and as an actor you know I can watch um I could watch him all day long in movies he's he's just so incredible 
Hello, movie it. house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so savings and loans. Uh, okay, which do you like better, Scrooge or the Grinch? Scrooge. Does it? Can it be the like the Bill Murray version of? Scrooge? It can be any Scrooge. Yeah, we just figure that both of them are characters who hate Christmas and they are. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Scrooge okay. because the Bill Murray Scrooge is also one of my favorite Christmas movies. I know not a lot of people love that one, but I do. Maybe it's because I love Bill Murray. Yeah. Um definitely That's funny. I it's love so Carol good. Kane. Carol Kane in that movie. Say, <laughs> She's so funny. What is it? It's a face. <laughs> it's even the face. It's yeah. one of my one of my absolute favorites. Um I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna go with Scrooge. I love okay. the Grinch. So I'm gonna go with Scrooge. All right. Which do you like better? Clear lights or colored? clear lights but clear lights but they have to be the classic warm white mm. i'm not a fan of the um of the like bluish bright white oh, okay yeah so i want i want a classic i do love the classic colorful lights as well but again not the new ones not the new mm. like led ones that they have i want the I yeah, want the old school. Yeah, I want that old school <laughs> warm ambiance that it gives up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. All right, which would you rather do: build a snowman or be in a snowball fight? Build a snowman. <laughs> okay. Build a snowman because I can bring up my creativity in that. Mm. I can make the snow person whoever I want them to be. I can give them real personality. I like yeah. that. Do you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? Oh, I am an excellent gift wrapper. <laughs> I'm an excellent gift wrapper. Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. I love wrapping presents. Okay. Uh, last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? And what does it look like if you have one? I do. Um, I do have an ugly Christmas sweater. Uh, I have one with a llama on it although that one does say happy llamaca so that one is more of a hanukkah sweater oh, yeah. i i need more ugly christmas sweaters honestly because you really <laughs> can you have too many ugly christmas sweaters no i mean you and you're can. like my sweaters are great they're not ugly <laughs> i know right yeah who said they're ugly point them out to me who said it maybe this year i'll make one get out the yeah, hot glue gun go and get creative poke yeah. some lights through it oh you know make it interactive yeah see that's Just legit as opposed to these ones that are like designed to be ugly christmas sweaters those are exactly aren't as good. they're ugly christmas sweaters yeah. at that point like i had one as a i had one as a kid that had like pom-poms like like <laughs> snow like pom-poms all over it um that i really like <laughs> yeah, i should try to recreate good. that yeah <laughs> i think so <laughs> Well, very good. You answered all the questions. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed well, thanks, it. Thanks for coming on the podcast. This was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really excited to get to meet you. And uh, we just are looking forward to this new movie. So thanks for coming on. Absolutely. I'm excited to watch this movie. I mean, I know it comes out October 30th. Um, happy Halloween, Miss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of perfect. I mean, because it is about ghosts and everything. I mean, Halloween. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, true. it's All like right. the, the, you know, the Christmas song when they say scary ghost stories and tales of the glory. Tales of the glory of <laughs> yeah. Christmas long, long ago. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. all about, uh, it's all about Christmas Carol. <laughs> I love a Christmas ghost. Yeah, yeah you're perfect. right. It is Halloweeny. <laughs> yeah. So do you have social media or anything like that you want to share? Um, you know, I am on Instagram and my ha handle is Kim Picks. Oh, there's a silent B in there. K-I-M-B-P-I-C-S. Um, which is a throwback to how a girlfriend used to spell my name all the time. Cause my full name is Kimberly. Oh, okay. She used to spell it Kim with a B. So everyone thinks it's Kim B picks. It's not, it's Kim picks, but the B is silent like lamb or Klein. You can tell I've said this before. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, we'll have it all in the description section. So thanks so much cool. and hope you have a very Merry Christmas and uh, hopefully cool. it will be the first of many Hallmark movies for you. I hope so too. And I hope you have a Merry Christmas as well. Thank you. 
We'd like to thank Kim for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with her and get to meet her. We really appreciate her taking time to talk with us. And if you have anything to say about all the things we've talked about, leave it in the comments section or on Twitter. We'd love to hear that. You can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure you're following the podcast at Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot, especially this Christmas season for people to find us. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also had the patron group and merch store that helps us out so much. And we have new festive designs at the merch store. So please take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. And thanks to Kim. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.